Aflastop is a USAID and Bill and Melinda Gates funded program implemented by ACDI VOCA and ASI in Kenya. The program in its entirety is looking at how to address aflatoxin increases during storage. We've looked at storage devices, but also the need to dry grain down before you put it into store. The following is an example of the dryer that we have developed that we think addresses smallholder farmers' drying problems. What you can see in front of you is the bed where we dry, dry the grain. It's made up of four pieces that can be taken apart so that it's easily mobile. The top of the pieces are covered with a thin wire mesh to stop the maize falling down, and each piece interlocks to create the bed. Around the outside, we attach the canvas back. The bag is to hold the hot air in, and it's attached firmly to the edge of the bed to stop the air escaping around the sides, and of course the maize dropping down underneath and therefore not drying. As you can see, the air it connects through the furnace, in the middle of the furnace, into the bed here. On the left-hand side, you can see the grate that's inserted into the furnace part. Here, we load it up with maize cobs to reduce the operating cost of the whole machine. You start a small fire with small cobs until it gets burning really well and you've got a nice big red sort of glowing ball. And then you pile the maize cobs up the side so they drop down into the fire through gravity so that you don't have to put your hands into, in, into the middle of the furnace. This is actually a downward draft furnace, so while you can see the flames are coming up at the moment, when we turn the fan on in a second, the flames are actually pulled down and across the middle of the um, device into the heat exchange so that we don't burn people. As you can see just now, the smoke will start coming out of the chimney, the fan is on, and now cold air from the outside is being pulled across the middle across metal plates so that the hot air goes from one direction with the smoke and out the chimney and clean fresh air comes from the outside over the heat plates and back into the and into the shallow bed so that the hot air then comes through. Once you get your furnace burning at three, four, five hundred degrees centigrade, it starts burning efficiently and you no longer see any smoke coming out of the chimney. You can't put hot air that hot into your maze, you'll make popcorn. So again that's the reason for the, the fan in the middle to pull cold air, cool it down to a point you can put it through the grain and then push that through the grain at a certain speed. You need to keep rotating your grain as you, as, as you dry it, not all the time but maybe every 20 to 30 minutes otherwise you create a moisture horizons. To know that you've got the right volume of grain and that you're running your machine at the most efficient level of grain versus air being pushed through, your A4 piece of paper should hover over the top like a hovercraft. This will be an important message to get out to the operators so they know whether they've overfilled their bed or not. It takes around four to five hours to dry your maize down from your 13 and, uh, sorry, your 20, 21% moisture down to between 13 and a half and 15%. And to do that, as I say, you keep rotating the grain around, moving the bottom to the top, at the same time, you can see chaff comes off. This is where all the dirt is kept and insects' eggs are found. We discovered during our trials that wet cobs burn much colder than, warm co than dry cobs. So we created this basket to put the wet cobs on the top, which dries it down while, before it goes into the furnace. Farmers have no moisture meters to test the grain. So the grain changes in texture and feel and noise when you shake it, and they pick it up they shake it in their hand, and when it becomes sharp and clinky noised, then they know that it's dry. And at that point, normally around 14.5 to 15% moisture, they're happy that they've received the service they've paid for.